So Apple just released iPadOS 16 Beta 4 to all developers, and the main thing that I personally want to test out is if Stage Manager got any more stability improvements, because it's probably the number one thing that hasn't been working as well as Apple would want it to work, especially when using a secondary display like the one I have behind me. But Apple did include some new features that I did want to show off, some little nuances that might make your life a little bit easier. So without wasting any more time, let's jump right into it and discuss iPadOS 16 Beta 4. <music> All right, everybody, so let's start off with the actual size of the build. I like to take a screenshot of every single time Apple releases a new update. So we're dealing with about 1.4 gigs. The last update was around 1.6 gigs. So depending on how much storage you have, I would recommend giving yourself twice as much storage. So at least three gigabytes of storage in order to get this update installed and installed correctly with zero issues. And then if you go into the settings and talk about build number, because this is how we like to see exactly what's going on from a build number perspective. So if we go in here and you actually click on the 16, you get a nice little message right here that shows you exactly what the build number is. So we are dealing with iPadOS 16-20A5328H. So that means we are getting closer and closer to a final release. All that H moniker means at the end is that the closer and closer we get to B and then A, and then finally the removal of that lowercase letter means we're finally gonna get close to the public release. But don't expect this release to come out until probably mid to late September for the entire public to test out. If you do wanna jump onto the public developer program, by all means go for it, but do it at your own risk. So the next thing I wanna show everybody are screenshots that I took of all the new splash screens that you should expect with the new iPadOS 16 beta 4 update. So there's three new splash screens. The first one is from the App Store. So it's just a new little welcome App Store splash screen. No new real data. It's just a safe and trusted place to discover and download amazing apps and games. So that's a new splash screen that was brought to us. The next one was inside of the Notes application. So if we zoom in, the biggest one here is the actual remember one less password. So end-to-end -end encrypt your local notes with your device password. It probably should say end-to-end -end encryption, but who knows, you know, I'm not an English major. But again, we have more powerful smart folders, new tool and drawings. So add new shapes and text boxes, and then lots more. So that's a new little splash screen for the notes application. And then also inside of the settings, if you go to your game center in settings, you get a new splash screen here as well. So if you zoom in here, you can see What's new in Game Center? See all your friends play, activity and achievements on the redesigned dashboard and profiles. It looks like Apple's investing a little bit more time in the Game Center, which, you know, it's, it is what it is. I only play one real game and that's NBA 2K from Apple Arcade. So now let's get into the meat and potatoes of the actual updates and any new feature sets. So Apple introduced with iPadOS and iOS 16, the ability to actually resend and edit a live iMessage within a certain amount of time. Apple first gave us 15 minutes to actually edit or completely delete that message or undo the send to the opposite sender. But now Apple has actually reduced that to two minutes for safety reasons. And that kind of makes sense. So you don't want somebody that stole your phone to be able to delete a message and kind of fake that it's you. But they also added a new little view, which allows you to see the log changes. So here you can see that in my first message that I sent, I actually typed in hi there and then I changed it to hi the. And then if I go down here, you can see that it was edited as well. If I click on the edit button, you can see that I said I wanted to send something to make sure that everyone knows watching to sub to the channel and I misspelled channel. And then I just changed that to say subscribe and to actually fix the typo in channel. Now you're able to see a log of all the changed messages. And if you do change a message that you can actually view that log of changed messages for uh, pretty much for forever, I do believe so, because it's been way longer than two minutes and you can see that it's still there. Like this one was sent hours ago and this one was sent about half an hour ago and you can still see the change log right there. The next thing I wanna show you is actually in the control center or the notification pull down menu. I know that we didn't get a cool new lock screen like iOS users did, but if I to play a song, let's say I'm in Apple Music and I have it right here, and then if I go down, go to my notification center, you can see that the actual bar for you to be able to scrub through the timeline is actually much, much bigger than it was before. And the same thing happens with the volume bar down there. All I know is that iOS gets a little bit of a nice review with their new lock screen, which I wish Apple brought over to the iPad, but we all know Apple at this point, they'll probably pull this out for iPadOS 17 and tout it as a new feature, just like they did with the app library. Another nice little nuance that Apple added was inside the home application. If you click on the home app, you can see that I have a brand new wallpaper. So Apple did add a couple of new wallpapers for you to use in the actual home application. So if we press on the three dots, go to home settings, scroll down a little bit, you can actually go into the choose from existing. And then these two new wallpapers are new. So we kind of have like a farmland or a plane and you can see that it's either sunrise or sunset. And then you have a couple of flowers right here too, which are all kind of blurred out a little bit. You know, it's always a welcome addition to get some new wallpapers, something new creative, because again, Apple didn't give iPad users the new wallpapers that came alongside iOS 16. Another new addition actually came inside the settings menu. So if we go into your wallet and Apple Pay, 
we now have a toggle for notifications down here, which is something that wasn't there before. So now you have the ability to toggle things off and on if you do so please. I like to keep it on because I like to know what I'm spending and how much I'm spending and I don't want any surprises. So with notifications, whenever I get a notification of something being purchased, I like to see that it actually got purchased and that it's logged and you know tracked and I kind of keep a mental note of it. So I always keep that on, but now you have the ability to toggle it off. Another cool new feature is actually with Siri, which is something that we had before on iOS, but I guess Apple brought it back to both iOS 16 and iPadOS. So we do have the ability to make phone calls or at least FaceTime like voice calls or audio calls. Even if you do have the cellular version, you can only do the data version of phone calls, but you have the ability to now call hang up directly through Siri. So you can say, you know, the actual word, I'm not going to say it out loud for you guys, but you can say, Hey blank, hang up and it's going to hang up whatever phone call or FaceTime you have going on. So you can use your voice to hang up on whatever call you want to. And then two other small changes I noticed inside of the settings is if we go into the notifications tab, and you click onto one of these applications. So I'm going to click on the Amazon one, or I guess the app store one. We now have a new visual representation of what each type of lock screen or each type of notification will look like on your like screen, on your notification center, or in your banner, but a nice new graphic to give you a good visualization of what it would look like if you enable or disable them. And then lastly in the settings is under focus modes. And then if you click on one of your focus modes, if I do my do not disturb one, we actually have a new animation or a new visual, again, visual representation or graphics of what you can do in terms of choosing a home screen. So if I have my do not disturb focus mode on, I can just have this screen enabled and then only this screen enabled will be chosen. But this up here is brand new. So again, Apple's giving us a little bit more of a graphical interface to make sure that everything just looks a little bit brighter, a little cleaner, and the UI is exactly what we expect. So those are the real tangible changes that we did see with iPadOS 16. The next thing I do wanna test out real quick is how it's functioning now with a secondary monitor. So let's turn this off and check that out. Okay, everybody, so let's talk stage manager now. What I wanna test out is exactly how everything is opening now. So if I open up Safari, you can see we still have that issue where if you do try to open up Safari, it goes blank until you open up another application. So if I open up my mail app over here, let's move it up to the display. You can see that then when I pull back Safari, it does open up. So there's a couple little nuances that still don't work perfectly well. So, and you can see that the dock actually disappears and I don't have any idea how to bring the dock back unless you go into multitasking mode. So if I open up the files app, for instance, you can see that still it freezes up. You have to come over here and move this app here, move this app in. And then eventually if you open up enough applications, then it will be able to pull in and you can see that the actual files application will work and it does work how it's supposed to. But you can also see that you can full screen stuff all the way. So it does take up the entirety of the screen, which is beautiful to see. And then you can just go back here, make it smaller again. So it does technically work on an ultra wide monitor, but you can see LumaFusion is still loading. So if I grab LumaFusion and try to put it over here and then bring it back, then it does open up. And you can see that I can still, again, open it up in full screen, which is great when editing video. It's just annoying that there's still those little bugs and those little nuances that don't really work. But again, with the multitasking, you can see that it does stay in a nice little view. So you can quit out of this one if you want by swiping up, open up the files app, and then you're good to go. Move this over, bring them in. And it did get a little bit more intuitive in terms of resizing some of these. So I have my mail app, I'll get my Safari app, we'll make this smaller, we'll make the actual files app smaller. So overall, it does work how it's supposed to. There's just small little things that aren't really working too well. And then one other thing that I did want to try out was actually NBA 2K. So if you remember in my last review, NBA 2K opened in portrait mode, even on that secondary display. So if I try to open it up, you can see that it seems to be working, which is awesome to see. So now I'll be able to play NBA 2K on a large screen. Can you make it bigger? It doesn't seem like you can actually. So if I want to tap to continue, I can do that. I'd probably use an Xbox controller for this, but you can see that it does work. We just can't really full screen it. And if I pull in another application, it looks like I can have a files app open and play the game itself. So that's a beautiful thing to see. I'm very, very happy about that. So stage manager seems to be getting better and better as each iteration does happen. And then this is one of those applications that can't be resized. So this is affinity photo. You can see it can't go big or small and it is a little bit broken. So give Apple some time. I'm sure by the time it releases in September, it'll be a lot better. But let's get out of this view and finish up this video. And then the last thing I do wanna go over is overall battery life. I like to check the battery life to see how these betas are doing. So if we go into battery life, and if you guys know me at all, you know that I've always struggled with iPad Pro battery life. It just has never worked very well for me. I mean, I'm not the best at showing actual good battery practices because I'm always in a beta. I'm usually always on the Magic Keyboard. I usually have it always plugged in. I always have my display to never turn off. So these, those are all things that you should probably actually take into account when I'm looking at my battery life. 
but you can see that we are getting five hours and six minutes of screen on time, which is more than what we usually have. Normally we're in that four hour range, but you can see, let's say on a day like, I think this was Thursday, we had nine hours and 33 minutes of screen on time with a little over 100% battery. So what's that indicating is that we were actually plugged in for a certain portion of whatever activity I was doing. But you can see something like LumaFusion took up six hours and eight minutes of screen on time and took up only 57% battery. So we're getting a little bit better in terms of battery management. So if we go on a day like this, we had five hours and 50 minutes of screen on time. We took up a little bit less than 100% battery. But again, the two big hoarders were LumaFusion and then NBA 2K. So I played NBA 2K for three hours straight and it only took up about 30% battery. So if everything is working how it's supposed to work, I should be able to get up to nine hours of continuous playback time of NBA 2K which is something that I would be extremely ecstatic about. But just to give you an idea of overall stability with the iPad Pro, on the iPad Pro itself, if you're not connected to a secondary monitor, for the most part, it works extremely well. Like there's no real issues, like Safari opens up perfectly, everything gets extended how it's supposed to, I can swipe up, click on Safari again, make it smaller, move this into here if I want, move another one into here. So you can see that everything is very responsive, which I like to see. And you can, again, move stuff around, you can make this smaller. So it is getting a little bit more intuitive in terms of how things are being overlapped and overlaid, which I'm very, very happy about. And then one of the biggest things that I did notice, because again, I live with the iPad Pro every day as my main computer, so I understand the nuances that go with owning an iPad in beta. But one thing that got a huge improvement was actual multitasking. Multitasking or the multitasking menu was very broken in the first three betas. Like you could see something that would just have a blur, you know, something that would just have a shadow. Some of them weren't coming in order, but you can easily now just quit out of one or just click on these if you want to, move this one over. And another thing that I did notice was that there were some applications in the first three betas that didn't open in this view, in the stage manager view, even with stage manager turned on. And two applications that came to mind were the settings application. So this is the first time I'm seeing it in this new stage manager view. But if you do notice, you can't make it any smaller. And then another one that did that was actually Affinity Photo. So Affinity Photo is what I use to edit my thumbnails and things like that, which you can see I have right here. You used to only be able to open it in full screen, even if Stage Manager was on, but at least now you do have the ability to open it in Stage Manager view, and then maybe pull in maybe your home application and have something that you need to drop into actually Affinity Photo. But again, you still, if I click on Affinity Photo, you can't make it smaller. So there's some applications that are limited to actually making them into that iPhone view in stage manager mode on the iPad. But at least now with these applications that were only full screen now can fit in. You can have multiple applications running with it on top of it. So that's a great addition. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw with beta four, the biggest tangible difference that we got was inside of the messaging app, which allows us to now only edit these already sent messages within two minutes of it being sent versus before they gave us an entire 15 minutes for that to happen. And we also got a change log that only the sender can view when all those different changes and iterations of that message were changed or removed within those two minutes. But in terms of the overall update, everything seems to be stabilizing a little bit more. Stage manager still needs some work. And I don't know if it's maybe the monitor that I have behind me or the fact that it's not a 4K monitor because Apple does state in the release notes that most of the issues that are happening with stage manager and secondary monitor support have to do with the fact that the monitor is not a 4K resolution. And this one behind me, I believe it's a 2160, so I think it's 2K resolution and it's an ultra wide as well. So probably a little bit of, you know, scaling issues that are happening. But overall, I am happy with the direction of iPadOS 16. I'm just really hoping that Apple really tightens up that secondary monitor support to really make the iPad Pro that computer replacement. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And leave a comment down below if you've updated to iPadOS 16 already, or if you haven't actually updated iPadOS 16 yet, let me know in the comments down below why you haven't. I would probably recommend it at this point, especially if you're only using it on your iPad and you aren't just getting it to use Stage Manager and Secondary Monitor support, because it's still not really quite there yet. I wanna say that Apple's like 80% of the way there yet, but overall, I am happy with iPadOS 16 and the direction of the iPad. But if you guys wanna see some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, or macOS, watch one of these videos right here, because I know we're working on some more stuff as these new betas get rolled out to all developers. But I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.